Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well today, man. I hope that I'm horrendously sunburned. I don't know if you can see in this lighting. Hopefully not. Anyway, welcome back to Chelsea News. I'm going to be talking about three stories to you guys today. Confirmed contract extensions by Chelsea Football Club. N'Golo Kante bowing out of the resumption of training and, I guess, for good reason. And also... I read an article on football.london by Kristen Hennage regarding Ben Yedder of Monaco. Ooh, could he be an option? Now Dries Mertens doesn't look like he's an option. And is he playing well? I'm going to tell you. So hold tight. So confirmed stories, interesting stories, speculative stories. You know how we roll, man. <laughs> If you want daily updates on Chelsea Football Club, news and general content from yours truly, please considering, please considering, please consider subscribing to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so, man. Hit that bell notification icon, it's important. Why not like the video to help a brother out? Let's get into the content. First off, let's start with confirmed notifications from Chelsea Football Club. They have announced they have triggered extension clauses, I think, in both Willy Caballero and Olivier Giroud. Giroud. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, hey, yeah, and you've reported on all this already. Yes, true. But now it's official from the club, and I want to sort of just put a, a nail in it and basically express what it means to Chelsea and us as fans. Firstly, Willy Caballero, like I said previously on another video, he's going to be 39. He is old. <laughs> now, the thing is, someone quite rightly brought up to me that, you know what, Jan, yes, he's really old, and it might seem a little bit too old to be a second goalkeeper, but who knows, man? Maybe, just maybe, he's going to be the third choice goalkeeper, and someone else is going to come in to back up Kepa. Maybe? Something else that was reminded to me or brought to my attention quite rightly too is Willy Caballero is a model professional. He's really good for the youngsters. He's one of those experienced, matured uh, players. You know, a lot of people in their 30s still act like kids. But Willy Caballero, he's a feel-good guy. He makes everyone, basically he talks to everyone. He binds the group together. And he's just a great professional to have around. Frank Lampard will absolutely recognise that and hence giving him a year's contract extension. Whether we'll see him play so much in the next campaign, who knows, we'll have to see. When it comes to Olivier Giroud, it is an interesting one because we were all pretty darn certain he was going to go to Inter, probably. He's 33 years old, but he's still has stuff to offer Giroud. Whether Chelsea are just triggering this extension so that they can sell him in the summer and make some money for him rather than him going on a free, to be honest, that will be a bit of a weird one because he's offered a lot to Chelsea. FA Cup, Europa League, top scorer in the Europa League, scored the opener against Arsenal, scored some great goals as well on the way, important goals. So, maybe just let him go on a free and get that extra signing on bonus, but maybe not. Maybe Chelsea just keep him for a year they're still looking to get another striker. Maybe they flog that try. Giroud stays. He's a senior player. They also, you know, Frank Lampard has a lot of respect for Giroud as well in terms of how he behaved throughout the whole transfer saga. He thought he was a model professional. Frank Lampard respects all that kind of stuff. Another senior player to look after the kids, really. I dig it. Giroud stays another year. Right, before I give you the lowdown on Ben Yedder's absolutely mega stats this season, dude is scoring a lot of goals. Still only 29. Put a pin in that, we'll talk about him in a minute. Let's talk about N'Golo Kante. So N'Golo Kante is not comfortable with the resumption of training and indeed the resumption of football. Although he reported back, as you'd expect him to, for the first day of training, he has voiced concerns and he has been excused on compassionate leave to not train. Who knows, maybe not return for football. I'm going to cite uh, an article from The Guardian here and read out what they said to give you a little bit more context. Ngolo Kante was granted compassionate leave to miss Chelsea's second day of Phase 1 training because of the midfielder's fears over the coronavirus. While Kante took part in Chelsea's return to small group training on Tuesday after registering a negative coronavirus test, the France World Cup winner has concerns regarding the attempts to resume the Premier League season. The 29 year old is not convinced that it's safe to train while the UK remains in the grip of the pandemic and was given full consent to miss Wednesday's session by Frank Lampard and the club. Lampard fully supports Kante's stance and it is not known when the Frenchman who trained at home yesterday will return. Kante's older brother Nîmes died of a heart attack shortly before the 2018 World Cup 
and he lost his father when he was just 11 years old. Kante, a quiet character who is understood to have largely remained indoors with one of his brothers since the suspension of the season, also experienced a health scare when he collapsed in front of his teammates in Chelsea training two years ago. Tests did not reveal any heart concerns, but the former Leicester player missed Chelsea's next game. So yeah, Kante, you know, he might have like a some sort of condition that made him collapse two years ago that has not yet been discovered, so you get his concerns. Obviously very sad about his brother and stuff, he understands the value of family and the pain of losing family, so you could excuse Kante for basically not wanting to put anyone at risk. And fair enough, and you know, really big respect to Frank Lampard who fully supports him, and of course he would, like any good manager, but the way Frank Lampard has been conducting himself throughout this pandemic crisis, he's been excellent, he's been the face of Chelsea Football Club and a very good face at that. So, no problem, Ngolo, you stay safe and uh, you know, we move, hopefully you can return back and everything it's gonna be all right, hopefully. Right then, let's talk about Wissam Ben Yedda. Kristen Hennage, an excellent football writer, wrote an article on football.london posing the question, why does Frank Lampard and Chelsea not go for Monaco's Ben Yedda? Especially after the whole Dries Mertens thing has fallen out. Dries Mertens is 33, Ben Yedda is only 29. Before I tell you about his numbers, in this article, uh, Hennage cites about how Monaco will they're basically prepared to listen to offers for Ben Yedda because yes Monaco are a real rich state and all that but apparently they're in financial difficulty perhaps related to financial fair play and they're willing to listen to offers for Ben Yedda and might need to generate the funds and with him being 29 this is probably their last window of opportunity to generate decent funds for the player who is indeed in excellent form. So bearing in mind Monaco are not the best team in the world, of course I've got a couple of good players, but for me there's a stronger teams in league. Uh. The 29 year old has made 25 appearances for Monaco this season, scoring 18 goals and registering four assists. He's played under 2200 minutes and he's got 22 goal involvements in the league. Less than 100 minutes per goal involvement playing for that Monaco side Interesting indeed. He's also got five Man of the Match awards, which is a very handsome number indeed. Five Man of the Match awards. Now, you could say all these positive numbers are in league. Uh, true, but Ben Yed has been around. He's got a lot of footballing experience internationally and indeed in domestic leagues. At his age of 29, he's seen it all. I think he'd be able to come into the Premier League, use his past footballing experience and perform quite well. Now, also, Frank Lampard was willing to go for someone a little bit more experienced up front, Ben Yedder could be the man. And the way you don't trust Michi Batshuayi to get certain things done, Batshuayi you trust his ability. He's a good finisher with both feet and he's strong and fast, but there's something in his mentality that doesn't offer comfort and support when you throw him on. Ben Yedder and his experience and his experience of scoring goals will probably leave you feeling a little bit safer if you're throwing him on to dovetail with Tammy or even in, be the substitute behind Tammy Abraham. Giroud might be happy to play a bit more of a bit part role now. Chelsea might still actually be planning on selling Giroud and just making a profit on him. Who knows? But could Ben Yedder be a decent and affordable option in what is a shaky and turbulent financial market that's going to be the transfer window in this pandemic. Think about it, there might have been a reason why Frank Lampard and Chelsea were going for a free transfer like Dries Mertens. Maybe they go for something that might cost not loads and loads and loads of money in Ben Yedda. You'd imagine he would be cheaper than Osimhen and Dembele. More experience, more goals as well. Also, probably that player profile that won't make Tammy think, well, that's me done as well. Do you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff together might be a perfect package. Right, so this is one of those occasions where I have to let you know this is not me saying Chelsea are linked with Ben Yedder. This is Chelsea, of course, needing a striker, looking to league uh, for strikers, looking everywhere for strikers, really. And Kristen Hennage writing an article for Football.London posing the question, why, Frank, why don't Chelsea go for Ben Yedder? Monaco are willing to listen to offers, they might need to sell him. He's of that kind of profile that Chelsea are looking at, experienced in the front line, won't necessarily demand to start every game, scores goals, he's scoring a lot of goals, 
could be affordable, like might not be loads and loads of money. To be honest, add those all together in this current situation, he could be a really ideal candidate for Chelsea to buy to bolster the front line. Anyway, what do you guys think about these stories I've spoken about in today's video? Get down in the comment section below and express yourself. Let me know what you think about the Kante situation. How do you feel about Caballero and Giroud extending? And also, would you take Ben Yedda? Do you think he's a good option? Do you think Chelsea should look into it, especially if Monaco need to sell? Let me know in the comment section below and express yourselves. And if you've enjoyed the content today, guys, I'd urge you to like the video. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you're new to the channel, man, follow me on social media at Football Yannick. Hey, why not? Uh, that's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football that's happening in Germany at the moment, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby